A tidal island off the coast of Essex, an experiment to manage climate breakdown and reverse habitat loss by rejuvenating ancient salt marshes, nature's miracle that traps huge amounts of carbon and as the daily tide floods and recedes, deposits vital nutrients for fragile plants, insects and migrating birds. Climate change is impacting this island and the whole estuary. And, and that's, you're, you're measuring that, you're, you, you are seeing that it's already happening. It's already happening, yeah, absolutely. And, and part of our plan for Northern Ireland is looking 100 years into the future. So it's a 100 year defence plan effectively yeah. to help adapt and protect the important habitats that we find on this island. The National Trust Annual Weather and Wildlife Review makes grim reading for the UK. Over the last 20 years, temperature records have soared. 2022 was Britain's hottest ever. The mercury is predicted to keep rising and our green and pleasant lands are struggling. Of 39 globally recognised biodiversity measures, 10 are flatlining. 13 are getting better, but 14 are getting worse. Nature's out of sync. For example, take the UK's salt marshes, like those found in Essex, 85% have gone. Our hotter climate means pests thrive and spread disease, like the oak processionary moth, which is migrating north. And in Exmoor, red deer are giving birth later, which means calves don't have time to build fat for winter. Back on the Essex coast, how to tackle the dual challenge of climate breakdown and nature loss. So what we've done here is actually we've moved the entire ditch line in about 10 metres and reprofiled this seawall. So the National Trust engineered a hole in the seawall and invited nature back in to do its best. We're already seeing those salt-loving plants, those halophytes, in and amongst this field um, that have come in naturally. We haven't seeded anything, we've just allowed the water to do its thing. And it's only taken seven months for you to notice a significant difference? Oh, absolutely. Less than that even. We did a fish survey through this creek system just here uh, at the beginning of September. So we were seeing nursery stocks of fish, um, things like bass, uh, were coming right the way up, far more than we thought they were going to be, far more. A really good sign. Good for wildlife, good for carbon. Right, so this is some of the golden samphire just down here. And the more of this kind of thick, verdant, layered vegetation, the better this environment is at carbon capture. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and better as a habitat overall as well. From salt marshes to reintroduction of beavers, there are solutions. Following last year's Global Biodiversity Conference, the UK agreed to halt the decline in wildlife by 2030 to make sure species are 10% more abundant by 2042. The causes of nature loss, not just climate breakdown, but urban sprawl, industrialised agriculture and pollution. The government's been warned by its own nature advisor it won't meet its own targets. The UK recovery strategies are detailed in the recent Environment Act and improvement plans. In some ways, the UK actually leads the world with the Environment Act. So but now are, we have... Are we using it properly? Well, you know, it's, it's early days. Essentially, you know, government's job is to create that framework of incentive and regulation. But actually, it is also the responsibility of businesses, um, individuals and communities then to work within that framework. So biodiversity restoration, actually, a responsibility lies with all of us. And at the heart of this, commitments to protect 30% of land in England by the end of the decade and the search for innovative nature-based solutions. The glorious mud of Northy Island may well be teaching us a lesson or two.